You're listening to Five Things with Lisa Birnbach. Hi, it's Lisa Birnbach, and I taped this on President's Day or thereabouts. And I am just thinking about President Abraham Lincoln, who was one of the greatest of our 45 presidents. He was a Republican. And, you know, it's amazing to me. This is my thought to open the the podcast. We now are in the first term of our 45th president. There have only been 45 presidents in this country. Isn't that weird? Just 45. I think the prep school Andover probably has had more presidents. Don't you? So anyway, this holiday is brought to you by Abraham Lincoln and George Washington, two of the greats. Now it's time. (laughs) That was my segue. Now it's time for the five things that made my week sweet. Number one, and it's hard to think of a week where this wouldn't be one or two, and that's politeness. I am a huge fan of good manners and politeness. And, you know, you are too, whether you notice it or not. I'll take the fall for being a fuddy-duddy. You don't have to be that fuddy-duddy. I know I'm that fuddy-duddy. But when people say please or thank you, and, you know, that's a low bar, but when people say please or thank you, I am happy. It makes me happier. I like when people are respected. Am I crazy that this is a big deal for me? Uh, Yesterday, a little girl about 11 years old and her mom were in a store. They bought something. They left the store. The mother left saying nothing. The daughter made a point of looking at her clerk and saying thank you with good eye contact. And I was tickled. I wanted to go and give that girl a hug. Those are good manners. Good manners make it easier to get along with everyone else. And it greases the wheels of human interaction. So politeness is number one this week and in a way every week. Number two is a show streaming on Netflix now. It's called Shtissel, S-H-T-I-S-E-L, Shtissel, which is the surname of an extended family, wait for it, of Hasidic people. Jews, wait for it, in Jerusalem, wait for it, in Yiddish and Hebrew, this show is, with English subtitles. And yet, it is possibly one of the most original, spectacular programs I've ever seen, or I should say in the last three or four years. And we're living in a golden age of television, drama, and comedy. I discovered it from my friend Fred, When he is obsessed with something, there's usually a very good reason for it. And unlike other NPR American types, I have missed Breaking Bad. I have missed Homeland. I've missed numerous trendy, trending, important television series. Missed everything on Showtime because for some reason we don't have Showtime and a lot of those shows look great. Anyway, I came late to Downton Abbey. Thanks to a flu, I got to see it all. The Crown, I came to very late. Oh, boy, did I love that. The Americans, as you know, because I've talked about it on the podcast, adore, but came to it so late, not at the end, but close to the end. And I've just started watching some of the, well, not all of it, but The Good Place, which is so clever and so good. Okay, back to Stissel. Stissel takes this family of people If you saw them on the streets of New York, and you do, you might avoid them. You might think they're all one note. You might think they're just religious and not anything else. I'm telling you, this show is so breathtaking. There's a daughter in the show who is unlike any character, as Fred says, ever. And, you know, there's the Goldbergs, there's Transparent. But Jewish people, like any other people come in various flavors and and aspects and have different passions and interests and flaws. It's so well written. And one last thing, the actor Michael Aloni, who stars as Akiva, is so good looking. Now, under his hat and his stupid haircut and his side locks, known as payas in Yiddish, 
I'm looking at him and thinking, he looks like Army Hammer, kind of. Well, because I love the show, I had to then read everything about it. And when you see him out of costume, he does look like Army Hammer. And maybe I'll do a separated at birth. You, you will see. And honestly, if any of you take my advice and watch Stissel, <laughs> it's hard to say, please let me know what you think of it. By the way, we watched 12 episodes in two days, the whole season. We watched in two days. It was unhealthy, but it was there was a point where it was now or never. It was so intense, the storytelling and the circuitous ways it took. And the dream sequences were unbelievable. Now, we have since found out there's another season. So I have something to do tomorrow. Okay. Number three, it's been so cold on the East Coast, and I know even in Los Angeles, it's, what, a bone-tingling 50? How do you people manage? I would like to suggest that you manage with some bone broth. I have been enjoying Brodo bone broth. That is really hard to say three times fast, Brodo bone broth, Brodo bone broth. Anyway, I'd read about it. I'd read that bone broth was really good for you. Do you believe everything that you read? Haha, <laughs> I retract that question. Anyway, I read that it was good for you and that there was a place where you could stand on the street and order a cup of bone broth. So we went there and I thought it was pretty good. Then I found that Fresh Direct, which is a grocery delivery service in the tri-state area, was selling frozen containers of Brodo broth. And I ordered one and I think I finished a pint in one sitting. It was so good. And you can also season it as you like. You can put more salt and pepper in it. You know, for me, all good food is a conveyance system for salt, but it doesn't really need it, in my opinion. When you go to a Brodo boutique, I guess, you can get them to put eggs in them or ginger and uh, wheatgrass or I, I don't know what, probably CBD oil at this point. Anyway, I think it's great. I think it's good for you. When you go to their website, it turns out they will deliver frozen Brodo to you wherever you are. Free shipping to 39 states in the U.S. and both coasts. And it's good for your skin. It's good for your mental health. It's good for your hair. It's nutritious. It's bone broth. Who knows if these claims are true, but it sounds good. And no, I'm not sponsored by Brodo. Number four, I have a friend named Jessica, who is very adventurous and very game. And she always invites me to fun things. And she invited me to a place called Spring Place, which is a giant, trendy work social club sort of thing in Tribeca. And I think there's one in Beverly Hills, it figures. Anyway, it's very modernist. It's huge with enormous picture windows. There are photo studios there. And when she invited me last week, it was Fashion Week, and it's such a Fashion Week kind of place. It was a freezing night, so I was dressed as the Michelin tire man, and there were all these gazelles in no clothes wandering around. And she told me to meet her for a screening of a documentary in the sixth floor sunken living room. And I ended up in a fashion show that I had no intention of going to, that I had no ticket to get into, and that I couldn't get out of. So here, picture, if you're old enough, Lucy and Ethel trying to get into a fashion show and then trying to really very quickly get out of the fashion show. And if you're too young to get that reference, and I weep, think of Melissa McCarthy in a fish out of water comedy, again, trying to get out of this hipster fashion show. You can see on my blog at lisabernbach.com, one of the cute young guys in a man bun or ponytail or whatever who was sitting in front of me. Anyway, usually there are people fighting to get into fashion shows, and there were. I was desperate to get out. It felt like a very long fashion show. It probably was the same seven minutes as or 12 minutes as any fashion show, but it just made me laugh. And it was a menswear denim line. I won't say the name, but I also got their swag. Everybody was trying to get in. I was trying to get out. I didn't even have standing room. I had a seat and I had swag. It was all wrong, but it was funny. 
And then Jessica and I had two kale salads because it was that funny. Number five, for all of you who think that I have an actual romantic crush on special counsel Robert S. Mueller, let it be said here that I don't. It's not romantic. I'm just really impressed with his service and his determination. Is he a good-looking man? That's undeniable. Do I have a crush on him? No, not at all. I'm scared of him. So anyway, thank you for listening to this podcast. While you're online, and you know you are, go to lisabernbach.com and you can read the somewhat different and very well illustrated version of this podcast. Also, you can see all the past podcasts and blogs and other things I've written. If you'd like to contact me, contact me there. There's a page for just that. I'm on Twitter at Lisa Birnbach. I came up with that all by myself. And I wish you all a great week. Stay warm and act natural. Bye-bye. That was Five Things with Lisa Birnbach. New episodes every Friday if she remembers.